Hey there, this is Building an iOS app with C Sharp, Module 4, Video 3. Uh, in this video, we are going to design and build out our scheduler service, or scheduler, depending how you pronounce that. Um, so let's jump straight into Xamarin Studio. Okay, so let's start by defining our contract. Let me just create a folder here, scheduler. This is going to be a much, much simpler service than the logger service, even though the logger service itself is quite simple. This is just brain dead simple. Because all the scheduler service needs to do is give us access to the various schedulers that we may need. Um, remember that a scheduler is just a uh, reactive extensions type, which means we need to add reactive extensions to this project. And the scheduler will allow us to um, tell Reactive Extensions where to run a piece of work. So for example, in a view model, we may need a piece of work to run on the synchronization context thread, or the, otherwise known as the GUI thread, so that it can access user interface components without causing a crash. That's just one example. Okay, so these are the schedulers I think we may need at some point. Chances are we won't use all of them. Or we may even need to add some more reactive extensions does to find more schedulers than, than what we've defined here. But I think this will do. So let's jump into our implementation. I'm not even gonna bother unit testing this. As you'll see, it's just not, it would be silly to unit test this. Okay, so each of our properties just needs to return the scheduler that Reactive Extensions actually already exposes for us as a singleton, like that. There is one exception, which is this synchronization context scheduler, because a synchronization context needs to be picked up when the schedule is created, so it doesn't really make sense to have a singleton for that. So instead we create our own instance in the constructor here. And we just need to return that from our property. And that is it for our, uh, for our scheduler service. As I say, I'm not gonna bother testing that. That would just be over the top. What I am going to do in this video though is think ahead a bit to what happens when we are testing a bit of code such as a view model that needs a scheduler service. We want to be able to control timing and such. In order to do that we need to use, well, first of all we're going to need a test implementation of our scheduler service interface and that implementation needs to use the test scheduler that Reactive Extensions provides. This is basically a scheduler that allows you to control time. So you can move forwards in time exactly as you specify, you know, by five milliseconds or whatever it might need to be to, to do your test. Now, unfortunately, I've not found a good way to get this Reactive Extensions test uh, functionality into uh, an iOS app. I'm trying to use the NuGet packages just falls over. So what I've done is just copied the code in previous projects, I've just copied the code into my test project. So I'm going to do that right now and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm back. I've added that functionality. Uh, a couple of things I need to point out that I did along the way. First of all, this was instance uh, like that, but it turns out this one's got a different name for, for some reason, it's default. So I'll fix that. This is the uh, code that I've copied in, reactive testing. Everything under Reactive Testing was taken straight from uh, Reactive Extensions uh, itself. I've had to 
make a slight change to my build setup because we're in a portable class library this uh, attribute doesn't exist so I've had to define this no serializable symbol for the compiler uh, I've done this in both debug and release as you can see so now that that will build successfully and and this includes reactive extensions test scheduler that I mentioned before so that's all Microsoft code there this stuff here is is my code this I'll start with this extensions um, this is just a few extension methods that are useful whilst testing so you can take a test scheduler and ordinarily you can only advance it by specifying ticks um, which is a bit unorthodox so I've added these extension methods to advance by a specific time span or advance to a specific date time and similarly we can schedule stuff using that same technique although I'm not sure we'll actually need to use these two in tests we'll definitely need to use these two in the other class I've added is this test scheduler service which is an implementation of our uh, scheduler service interface and it also extends the reactive extensions test scheduler and all it does is for every type of scheduler it just returns this so no matter which scheduler the uh, system under test is requesting it's going to get the test scheduler back as it's uh, as the scheduler so then we can control time for that test uh, for that unit under test I've also got these methods which I've used in in other projects in the past basically all it does is pumps any uh, outstanding work in the scheduler automatically so we don't have to kind of manually advance the scheduler in the test which is it I found it useful in the past we'll see if we can do without it in this project because I, I, I it feels like a bit of a hack to me as, I, as I've uh, commented here so it'd be nice if we could do without it but just sometimes it's just so much easier just to say you know what just pump everything through the scheduler don't make me manually tell you to advance all the time certain tests just benefit from that okay so that is it really for this video we have our scheduler service we have a test scheduler service that we can use from um, unit tests so that's it we'll move on I'll catch you next time see ya